Okay, guys, hope everybody can hear us. Welcome tonight. Um, just want to make sure everyone can see my uh, screen. They should be able to see it. Um, if you have um, any questions uh, tonight, you can type them into the questions box on your GoToWebinar control panel. And what we're going to do, Mark and I are going to go through and answer your questions at the end. So type away and we'll make sure we go through each of the questions at the end. So. Um, the questions is uh, just yeah, locating your GoTo webinar control panel. So welcome tonight. Um, I've got a special guest here tonight, Mark Howard from uh, from the Howard Group, um, Good evening. and myself, uh, Rick Stapleton, head of sales at uh, Real Estate Investor. Uh, tonight we're going to go through a, a presentation on how to benefit from the big shift in the Australian property market. Um, and uh, yeah, it'd be great to share some stories with, with Mark and. Um, and talk about what what this big shift is and and how you guys can can take advantage of that. So um so just a few housekeeping rules here, guys. Um, to maximise your audio quality, uh, please ensure your speakers are on and volume is up um, and not on mute. Um, you can test your audio in the control panel of the GoToMeeting software under audio preferences if need be. If you can't hear us, please ensure your speakers are on and turned up. Uh, and also turn off um, Outlook, Skype, um, music or video that you've uh, Got going in the background as well, and obviously faster internet is uh, is better quality quality uh, audio as well. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, my name is Rick Stapleton, head of sales at Real Estate Investor. Uh, I'm also managing director of of Builder Builder, and here we've got Mark Howard, um, our, our special guest. Um, I've known Mark for quite a while now, and uh, and I've seen a lot of his developments go up and. Uh, Pretty much every single one of them has been highly successful. Um, he is the managing director of the Howard Group, um, and uh, we're going to hear some great stories uh, tonight from Mark. So just just a bit of housekeeping as well, general advice, disclaimers. Um, the material contained in this presentation is an overview only. It should not be considered as a comprehensive statement on any matter, nor relied upon as such. This presentation contains general information only and does not take into account your personal objectives, financial situation or needs, and you should consider whether the information is appropriate to you before acting on it. Before acting on any information, you should consider seeking advice from a financial advisor and your accountant before making any financial decisions in relation to any matters discussed in this presentation. So, um, REI. well. Principally, um, we help investors build and manage their property portfolios. We have a couple of memberships. We have the pro membership um, and we also have the premium membership and we may have a number of these clients uh, listening to us tonight. And we also have a growing number of free members as well that take advantage of things like suburb reports, ebooks, and listening to this webinar tonight. Real estate investor has guided thousands of people through, uh, you know, through purchasing their property since 2006 through the investor search tools. Uh, it's helped a number of clients build wealth through properties. Uh, it provides superior real estate information um, and helps clients reduce their debt to retire early. As I mentioned before, we have over 250,000 members, uh, including free members and paying members. Um, Real Estate Investor uh, is listed on the ASX and interestingly, um, some of you may not be aware, but um, we have Anthony Catalano on our board who's the CEO of Domain, um, which is uh, a large a large company, everyone's, everyone's heard of Domain, it's a large part of the Fairfax Group which is also listed. Um, we've also got Simon Baker um, who is our, our CEO. Um, he used to be the CEO of realestate.com.au uh, and uh, he obviously drives a lot of the direction of our company. These guys are a wealth of knowledge uh, and very experienced. We also have a number of partnerships um, with Real Estate Investor, uh, Washington Brown, um, Quantity Surveyors. We have uh, partnerships with Xero, uh, a, a large joint venture with Domain, uh, Your Investment Property, Price Finder, which drives a lot of our, our, our data feeds, um, and Builder Builder as well. So we're going to go to our, uh, our first poll for tonight, and I hope I can get this right. Um, the first poll um, is, do you have a property strategy? So a lot of people go and buy properties without a strategy, and I'll go into that a little bit later on tonight. But the poll, I'll try and open this now. And okay, so I'm going to launch the poll. Uh, and I'll give you guys about 10 seconds to, to answer it. It's pretty standard. It's a yes or a no. 
and once we finish the poll, we will sh uh, we will show you the answer or everybody's answer is summarized anyway. Okay, three, two, one. Right, there we go. Forty-six percent said yes. Forty-six percent no, and eight percent what is a property strategy. Okay. All right. Back to our presentation. So, the big shift in the Australian property market, which was the title of this presentation. So, to summarise, we are experiencing the lowest interest rates in the uh, in Australian history for the past fifty years. Anyway, fifty, sixty years. Um, this cycle is um, most probably coming to an end over the next year or two as interest rates start to move up. A large portion of Australian property has been purchased more recently by overseas buyers. Um, I was just chatting to Mark a little bit earlier before we began this presentation and, and I thought that you know some projects were 30 to 40% um, overseas buyers and Mark was saying to me some of them are even 100%. Correct. Mark. Yes. Um, so that just shows you the um, the aggressiveness of a lot of overseas buyers wanting to buy into the Australian property market. It is seen as a, a safe a safe haven, um, particularly for Asian buyers. Um, lending institutions have tightened their lending criteria recently as well. Um, they're they're actually in a large part not lending to overseas buyers um, in, in in the Australian property market. Um, and also valuations have been driven down by um, oversupply concerns in some locations um, and some of those um, come to mind are in a CBD Melbourne uh, and some of the uh, CBD locations around um, Sydney and also Perth as well um, and, and, and inner city Brisbane as well. Uh, we're going to see an increase in buyers failing to settle on properties. Uh, in the Australian market and this is mainly due to overseas buyers not being able to get finance at all because Australian banks won't lend to them anymore and they've already signed unconditional contracts some years ago uh, and it's also due to the lower valuation. So a lot of buyers are going, well, hey, I bought a property for $500,000, the valuation is now $400,000 and I can't get finance, I'm just going to drop my 10% deposit and walk away. Um, so what what's going to happen here is we're going to see an increased supply on the market of a lot of units having to be resold again by developers or worst case uh, by, by receivers stepping in and taking over those development companies. Um, what does this mean? It means a flight to quality. Um, so when these properties do resell in, in some areas, we're going to see some of them snatched up pretty quickly by owner-occupiers. So they're going to buy the ones that have high quality finishes and they've got uh, larger layouts, so no, no smaller, um, really small investor type units. There's going to be a flight to the, the larger owner occupier ones with, with the better finishes that have been done by the best developers. Design is now key. This is the big shift in the Australian property market right now. You could pretty much buy anything in Sydney in the last six or seven years and you would have made money. It didn't matter what you bought, even if it was done by a mum and dad developer and it was full of investors, you still would have made money but there's, there's been a massive shift in recent years and this is why we've got Mark Howard from the Howard Group on board uh, to demonstrate um, the key design principles and, and this flight to quality principle as well. What's the key characteristics of a successful property investor? Well, you've got to treat it seriously. Um, it is a business. Uh, it's, it's not a hobby. You've got to have a plan. So that's what I talked about in regards to having a strategy. It's having a plan. Um, about which um, where you're going to buy, what location, um, and, and what type of property you're going to buy. Is it going to, going to be an apartment or a townhouse or a house and land or a, or a duplex? Um, it's, it's knowing and understanding the right areas in terms of is your principal aimed to get capital gains or is it cash flow or, or is it both? Um, having a plan around this and actually forecasting this and what your retirement looks like when you go to retire um, is, is part of having a plan and, and doing the financial modelling instead of just guessing and hoping. You've got to have a team of experts around you that you can trust because let's face it, we're all busy. We've all got, most of us have day jobs and we can't be doing this all ourselves. So you're best to bring in the best people to help you, um, you know, do your plan and get the right properties. Research, can't underestimate um, research. research. Re I've got research there three times obviously. Uh, it's very important. Uh, it's about doing your homework. Um, you've got to set smart short-term uh, and long-term goals. So once again, taking it seriously. Um, maximise depreciation benefits. Now, the way to do that is buying new property uh, rather than um, a second-hand property. Have patience because property is a long-term game. 
um, when we do your property strategy, it's about, hey, if you're 30 years old, it's about what's going to happen in you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years or in 47 years when you retire. Uh, but it's also about having those capital gains along the way so that you can leverage your equity and buy another property so that you can secure your long-term financial um, retirement. Target market, try to appeal to the largest audience. The largest tar target audience in Australia, Mark, is owner-occupiers, right? Owner-occupiers. Yeah. So I think overall, 75% of all properties are you know, owner-occupier and 25% are investors. It does vary from suburb to suburb, but that's your large target market there. So once again, it, it's not about buying a small, tiny investment unit uh, in this market. It's about buying something that will, will appeal to owner-occupiers and have that homely feel to it. Location is key. Obviously, we've mentioned a few key areas like in a, in a Melbourne CBD where there is oversupply issues as well. Um, so you've got to be in the right location. So people say, oh, yeah, Melbourne's oversupplied, and you hear that all the time in the market, but they're really talking about the inner city Melbourne area when they're talking about oversupply. Uh, they're not talking about all of Melbourne. They're not talking about 30, 40K out of Melbourne, for example. Um, also, regularly review your portfolio. So when you buy something, it's all about, hey, don't just stick it in the bottom of the drawer and, and, and hope it goes up or, or take the view, hey, I've been reading the paper, prices are really subdued in Sydney or whatever it may be. You've got to regularly review your portfolio, look at, what, look at what's for sale, do it every six months or have a team around you that can do it for you. So what are the common mistakes to avoid with property investment? Well, you want to make sure you purchase in the right structure. So there's a number of ways you can buy in terms of trusts um, in your own name, company names, all that sort of stuff. Um, you've got to structure the loan correctly. So it's things like when you when you're onto your second or third property, um, you know, be be wary of collateralizing all of your loans, crossing them over, because when you go and sell one, the the bank may want you to apply all those funds to debt reduction, or or you can't refinance one and buy another property because they're all crossed and they just want to use the whole lot for debt reduction once again. So structuring is important, but that's about having a good broker and a good team around you. Um, biggest mistake is not doing your due diligence. It's about having a chat around a barbecue on the weekend and saying, hey, hey, Joe, what do you reckon? I was thinking of buying this unit in, in Sydney. Uh, what do you think? Oh, no, nah, no, nah, I've heard that's that's not a good area or something like that. That's That's not really doing your due diligence. That's listening to other people. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it. Um, also, having a buffer is really important um, because if, you, if you've been to your broker and the broker says, "Hey, you can you can borrow up to or you can purchase a property up to six hundred thousand dollars," sometimes valuations just don't come in on the dollar. It might come in ten, fifteen, twenty k light, and if you don't have a buffer there, then you can't settle on the property, and you'll actually have wasted solicitors' fees, all that sort of stuff. So. It's about having a buffer. It's also about having a bit of money up your sleeve as well, just in case things go wrong. Hey, have you got a tenant? If you got a vacancy for four weeks and you've got to pay the the loan repayments for yourself, for example, so buffers are important. So it's not putting yourself in a in a situation where you're stressed to the limit when you buy a property. Extra strategies are also important as well, uh, depending on what sort of property you're buying. But my view is you should hold for the long term anyway. But maybe an extra strategy would be, hey, if you buy the wrong property, how are you, how are you going to sell that property? Once again, it's about appealing, having a property that does appeal to the largest target market, being an owner-occupier. So when you go to sell it, you've got a lot of buyers that will come in and take it off your hands. Um, and also, having a team around you, not having the right support network is a big mistake because you do make mistakes and you need advice. Um, and trying to do everything yourself um, can lead to you losing money because once again, we're all busy in our jobs. Um, we've all got kids, or most of us have got kids, and we're, and we're busy day to day. And trying to do it all yourself, you'll just cut corners um, and end up losing money. So what is an offer plan property? That's probably a really, really simple question, Mark, isn't it? Um, yeah, maybe you can answer that one. What is, what is an offer plan property? Offer plan property, uh, buying something where um, we have a sales display and uh, we give you a, uh, a, a contract and a plan and a presentation. We might have videos and more often than not, we uh, we need to uh, sell some properties off the plan to uh, satisfy the banks that, um, you know, there, there are sales there. Uh, the property has been accepted by the marketplace by those um, off the plan contracts. Um, and bearing in mind that uh, getting getting money off a, a bank to typically fund a development, you have to go through a credit committee. So buying off the plan uh, pre-construction is all about uh, disclosure. 
So it's an opportunity for the developer to show you what he's going to do, ask some questions, get your lawyer to have a look at the contract, check the finishes. Um, so buying off the plan, it doesn't have to be quick. You know, buying off the plan can be the opportunity to have a really close look at what you might be getting yourself into. Great, great answer, Mark. Thank you very much. I think it was better than what was on that slide. Some of the pros of purchasing off the plan, and Mark, feel free to cut in because you know a lot more about this than I do. Um, but one of the pros that I see from buying off the plan is you can actually secure the property today, um, well, at today's prices. So often when, um, well, for example, one of your projects, uh, Atmosphere, that you're doing right now, and we'll go through it a little bit later on, um, when you first um, put that on the market to sell it, how long was it until that first unit would have been delivered to a buyer? 18 months. 18 months. So so people who bought that unit um, 18 months before it was to be completed and stage one is completed today, they would have bought it 18 months ago at that at that price, right? Correct. Now, property prices, as we know, generally do go up, so they would have got a great deal. Um, so that's that's what I see the main benefit of buying off the plan is buying at today's prices and then watching markets move up over that time. And hopefully, um, you may be a little bit lucky, but um, you know it's worth more than than what you paid. Um, another thing is government incentives. Um, I know in Victoria, for example, um, when you pay stamp duty in Victoria, when you buy a an off the plan unit. The stamp duty is assessed on the land component only, um, or whatever is being constructed. But as it isn't constructed at all, you end up paying stamp duty just on the land component. So there is a huge stamp duty duty concession there in, in Victoria, for example, with off the plan units. Um, so some of the other pros, um, you should get a better price if it's a stage development as well. Um, sometimes you know in stage one you'll get a you'll get stage one pricing, and by the time stage one's been delivered, and then the developer's delivering stage two and three and so on. People, people are more willing to pay a high price and the market's moved up over time as well. Some of the, um, the cons of purchasing off the plan is if the property market falls um, over time. Now, this is more important if you're an investor, not an owner-occupier. Um, but yeah, if markets crash, like for example, in Perth, we've seen markets come off um, uh, you know, uh, over the last year or so uh, and people who had purchased off the plan you know, a year or two ago that are looking at settling right now would, would probably find that their units are worth less than what they paid. Um, development delays can be one of the big problems as well. That's why we have sunset clauses in off-the-plan purchases. and um, But often the sunset uh, clauses are, you know, a good sort of, you know, six to 12 months longer than when the developer expects the off-the-plan development to actually finish or be completed. So delays can often cause, cause issues. Um, more so if the markets are softening or going down, but hey, if markets are going up, everyone's happy because they're making money. They don't actually have to settle it and, and lay out any money. So it's a good way to make money sometimes. Um, some of the cons, like we like we talked about before with the big shift, is expected finance may not be available. So a lot of overseas buyers bought Australian property and all of a sudden Australian banks aren't lending. Um, that causes a huge issue. So there are changes in, in the finance market. And sometimes, like we saw last year, Banks tightened their LVR restrictions, loan to value ratio, on, on investment lending as well. So that can that can affect um, when you go to settle your property. Rising interest rates can be an issue because when you do your numbers day one, you're basing on a certain interest rate. Then when you go to settle, interest rates are higher, uh, and all of a sudden it goes from being cash flow positive to cash flow negative, as well. Uh, good point here. Final product is unknown. Can't physically see it. Well. Hey, that can happen as well, especially if it's the first uh, stage and you're going off an artist's impression or a render. Um, so yeah, so some important things there. There's lots more we could go through, but we'll uh, we'll move on. Some of the tips for buying off the plan. Hey, big one there is research the developer. Very very important um, because, like I said, a mum and dad developer will deliver a certain type of product, and, a, and an expert professional developer um, will deliver something that will actually exceed your expectations. Uh, also important to seek legal advice on on your contract as well. Check the disclosures, all the you know the inclusions, all that sort of stuff. So we'll move on to Mark. It's time for Mark to start talking about himself, um, and I'll hand the uh, mic over to Mark. Uh, thanks very much, Rick. Um, so um, yeah, we uh, we kicked off in about 1992, and uh, we developed a couple of houses, and then quickly moved on to some townhouses and uh, and onto some apartments which uh, took us through to about 95. And from then, uh, we've just been uh, developing on a regular basis. 
Um, you know, early career was uh, uh, working in the building industry, uh, getting a building license and really understanding the grassroots of uh, delivering projects, more uh, particularly on the building side to get the time and quality uh, aspects to the building. Uh, we branched into development, which was uh, an obvious step. Uh, we kicked off with uh, bringing our building and development skills and, and uh, design skills uh, to a uh, development business with some uh, partners. Um, and very quickly, developers embraced the, the building aspects of it, where you can build quality design and function in, into your product. Um, bearing in mind uh, the construction side of the uh, the feasibility is something like 70% of the expenditure. So it's uh, it's an important part to get right, which is uh, when we come back to our our uh, design design and uh, quality features. Developing skills uh, get onto more location and uh, vision and understanding the market, but. Uh, 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 reflecting on some of um, Rick's earlier comments uh, about being in for the long term and doing your research and understanding the fundamentals is uh, particularly important. I think when we looked at the pros and cons then, for every pro there's a con and for every con there's a pro. So, um, you know, it's, it's just about understanding it and uh, having your buffers, doing your research and really uh, taking an interest in uh, what you're doing. Um, and again, having the right people around you. And again, um, having a history, uh, you can look over the history and see the buildings and how they performed and where they are. Yeah, yeah. I was just saying to Mark as well, <clears throat> I've been through a, past a couple of his earlier projects and and they look exactly the same as they did 10 years ago um, because they stand the, the test of time and they were built well and well designed um, and obviously looked after by owner occupiers. Who now occupy these buildings, and you know they, they clean their glass on their balconies. They don't hang towels over them. Um, you know they, they have a good body corporate that, that looks after the grounds. Yeah, stuff. another very important part of it is uh, who is the body corporate manager and um, who makes up the committee. Um, and in owner occupier buildings, clearly you get uh, owners that uh, generally are on the committee. They take a keen interest in the presentation and the maintenance of, of the building. Yeah, yeah, no, good point. Um, so, Mark, um, the Howard Group, um, you know, maybe go through a little bit about your passion and drive and, um, you know, and what's, what's delivered you to where you are today in more recent times. Yeah, well, understanding the, the building side of it was uh, one aspect. And then the other aspect was um, getting on the development side was being able to look at a block of land and identify what you think is the highest and best use. It could be a high rise, it could be a low rise, it could be house and land. But with all of them, it starts with finding um, what you think is the right product in that precinct. So it, it gets to location. So in a certain location, you're not going to build townhouses, you're going to build apartments and, yep. Yep. and uh, vice versa. Um, and it's important, um, again, with the, with, the, with the passion side of it, is that you like getting a good uh, team around you to talk to you about your property investment we go out and we get a good team around us of architects and engineers mechanical electrical consultants and town planners and uh, we have a good relationship with the uh, local council and so everyone's driving for the same outcome which is a product that uh, fits into the neighborhood it's fit for its purpose. It's not overdeveloped. It's not underdeveloped, and it has a, a number of features which uh, you know suit the precinct. Yeah, <clears throat> great. So you've delivered now to, um, to date about eight hundred million dollars worth of property. Yeah, I've not added That's that a big up. Figure. Yeah, I've not added that up personally, but uh, yeah. it could be about right. I think your son Jack did. Um, yeah, thanks I, very much, I Jack. His, I hope his maths good. Uh, but there's one pr uh, project in particular, the Sphere, that I know of, which was in Southport. Um, near the hospital precinct there, but that that was huge. That how many townhouses are in there? Yeah, that was units. That was an excellent project. We went to a, a renowned uh, um, architect who had a, a passion for urban design. Mm. It was quite a large. Uh, it was, in the end, we had sort of uh, nearly four hundred apartments in there oh, next there to, next to the uh, new University <coughs> Hospital. That's close to it's close to one hundred and fifty million right there. Yeah. So uh, when you talk about location, you know, it's also. Uh, you know, if you depending on the type of product you're looking for, it's about being around infrastructure. It's about being around jobs. It's about being around 
parks and easy access into the city and uh, things like that. So sphere that you mentioned and uh, ticked all those boxes. But what was um, particularly interesting about it is um, once we delivered that project, um, it became a, uh, a prototype for the Gold Coast City Council on um, what urban development and in intensifying uh, land uses around infrastructure uh, should look like. Yeah, great. So this is um, this is one of uh, I've been this has been pointed out to me on Chevron Island. Uh, this was done in two thousand and one when the property market was about to kick off, um, and uh, yeah, there was it's, it's townhouses, isn't it? These are units. Oh, it yes. came up. We yeah. we yeah. This one came off uh, when GST was introduced, and so we're probably coming <laughs> off uh, a little bit of a low. So what did you learn from this one? What what was the key takeaway from this project? Uh, key takeaway was Chevron Island. Um, Chevron Island is just at the back of Surface Paradise, and uh, it was a fairly um, you know it was full of a lot of old units. Uh, rents were quite low, um, but because of its position to the city and the uh, uh, employment opportunities for the tourism industry and and things like that that uh, new affordable um, accommodation was needed so we did quite a few on Chevron Island during that period yeah and I think um, there's not actually Chevron Island for guys who don't know it um, it's it's um, yeah there, there are some some older style units on there um, but it's um, yeah it's it's very close to surface paradise um, and this particular project um, and it still looks good, and it's you know 15 years old, but um, it, it is classic, a classic look to it. Uh, I don't know what sort of style design is this. I don't know. Well, we we it, back in the day we called it Saint Raphael. It oh was, yeah, so uh, it's Italian. It was coming off that sort of um, <laughs> yeah. yeah Saint Raphael sort of French provincial oh. sort of look, but uh, oh. what's changed on Chevron Island, of course, is the uh, there isn't as many old units to uh, knock down anymore. Yeah. Land values have gone crazy, so. Um, you can't actually replace these units now. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So this is the, one of my favourite ones, Vagon Broadbeach. Um, Mark, um, this is the, one of the first um, full uh, level. Basically, everyone had a whole level to themselves. Yeah, one per floor apartments, uh, 325 <clears throat> square metres, uh, opposite the beach in Broadbeach. Um, little, there's a, a, a house that we managed to fit at the front there, there's a beach two house. Or three houses. There's a couple at the back as well. Yeah, a couple of yeah. beach houses at the back, but... Um, with that, uh, with the curved frontage, it just you, you get uh, southern views down to uh, Kulangata, and you look north as far as the eye can see. Um, again, at the time, it was uh, uh, the position and the product. It still it still holds its own today as being uh, one of the best performing one per four apartments on the coast. Yeah. Very tightly held. Yeah. The Pinnacle. So this one's located on the Narang River. This is effectively what we'd call a high rise. Yeah, it's definitely a high rise. Yeah. Um, yeah, we picked this one up, um, you know, um, early in 2000, this block of land. So sometimes as a developer, it's um, you're, you're constantly on the out, uh, lookout for land. I mean, land is our opportunity, being able to get it at the right, the right price or have the right vision for it. When we launched this one, there hadn't been a high rise uh, for a little while. Um, this is, again, going through that recycle period. But we bought this land off some uh, Japanese uh, vendors who'd had the land since the, the late eighties. I don't know mm. whether you remember the mm. late eighties. Oh yeah. Yeah. I was, um, yeah, I was alive. Alive. Yeah. <laughs> and this one's been, uh, you know, again, a very, a very good take up on the off the plan sales. And, um, it's been a, again, very tightly held building. Um, it's on the river. And one of the things we did here back in the day, you can see in 2003, we didn't, we put cinemas in. Yeah. Um, in fact, I think on one of my developments, Raffles on Capri, we put one of the first cinemas in a residential development. It was all the rage. Of course, now uh, yeah, we uh, just about have our own cinemas in our lounge rooms, don't we? Yeah, we do. We do. But we had great facilities there. Um, yeah. You know, tennis courts and uh, swimming pools and jetties. Might skip this one past. Where's Roslyn Bay? Is that up? Near? Roslyn Bay is up uh, on the on the coast um, yeah. from Rockhampton. Yeah. Very very nice part of the world, and um, yeah. you know, again, if you like it up in that neck of the woods, it's fantastic. Yeah. A little, little bit hot, but uh, boating's fantastic. Fishing's they, fantastic. They, they still look good internally, anyway. They don't. They don't look like they've dated much at all. Um, so back to the sphere. We spoke about that briefly, so we'll skip past that one just to be aware of time. Um, so more recently, you've completed uh, Rhapsody. Yeah, yeah. Rhapsody um, was a block of lead that we bought back in uh, the late 1990s, and um, just recently when we went through the GFC. Um, development funding um, was very difficult, 
So we uh, went to Singapore and found a partner for this uh, whole base. So that building is now complete and uh, it's a stunning looking building. It's uh, across the road from the Marriott and Service Paradise. And yeah. the, uh, the one below at Brooklyn, yeah, mm -hmm. well, we're just finishing that one now. And uh, this one was, uh, this one's at Varsity Lakes and it was uh, in, it designed around 90210 uh, type um, New York. Uh, for this, for this just, break on it. Yeah, yeah, for the students, and uh, you know, you. Um, so we tried to get that warehouse look, concrete ceilings, timber floors, the brickwork, facilities yeah, on the roof. Uh, quite edgy. I uh, I think there's some pictures. Uh, We've got some more pictures later on. Yeah. We'll one of the, one of the interesting things, um, you know, again, when you um, sometimes when you develop, uh, when you're finished, you uh, compare your brochure to the finished job and. Uh, so uh, one of the compliments, compliments we often get is, wow, it looks just like the brochure. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, we've got some pictures of the, the render, which that is the render there, and we've got the real pictures, so we'll look at that in a second. Um, so that's Ravs who we spoke about. Yeah, so that's um, it uh, sitting on the Marriott, and uh, you can see some in the foreground of the Marriott there. That's the, that's the, uh, the light rail that's under construction. Yeah. Um, it's also on the V8 track for anyone out there that might be interested in uh, – racing yeah i've been through these units as well and actually went on the rooftop and um had a look at it when they were finished and uh yeah very impressive something different we did with uh, rhapsody yeah. if uh, we're interested is we uh, we had three uh facilities so we have the, the ground floor which is the swimming pool and access to the beach and then the, the picture below is a recreation facility on level 27 so the whole level is dedicated to um you know barbecues entertainment conference rooms gymnasium mm. um so it, it's nearly like, uh, and then on the rooftop, we have rooftop gardens and other barbecues. So it's like every apartment has its own um, stunning view and facilities. Yeah, no, great. I reckon this would be a great, whoever bought in this, it, it's a great investment because uh, you are literally a stone's throw from the beach. Um, and and yeah. a lot of the units have views, beautiful views. All that the, fantastic beach, northern yeah. views, which won't get built out. So, yeah. you know, again, you know, some of the uh, design <laughs> philosophies are uh, northern light, natural ventilation, and yeah. um, Amazing. and uh, insulation. So this is these are all uh, north-facing. But interestingly, um, you know, this is a short-term rental building. So this is more the uh, – the, the, the conference market and uh, people flying to Surface Paradise for a few days. The other developments are more about permanent tenants. Yeah. Great. And this is Brooklyn we spoke about. So this is the render. Um, so when we talked about off the plan, about having a vision and buying it yes. off the plan, this is what you looked at basically. Um, and, hey, it looks great. Um, and this is from a different aspect, from uh, from a drone. But um, – you know that's that's the real finished deal. Um, that's the building complete. And the other one was the render. Yeah, the other one was the render. So, you know, pretty. If you go back there again, um, taken from the, the street view, uh, but taken from a. It's a shame it's taken from a different view, but different angle. We do actually yeah. have some pictures taken from uh, the right angle. So we'll have to, yeah, but um, and there's a there's oh, also yeah. a vision from me. Is that's a that's a real. This is uh, well? yeah. We 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 had an artist impression of the internal courtyard. So um, this is the actual uh, finished product with the glass lifts. Wow, that's the great. open courtyards. Um, and this one was really designed around. I had uh, a hotel I went to in Melbourne. Um, okay, it was in Collins Street. I remember walking into this atrium and uh, mm. I was so impressed with the atrium. I thought, wow, one day I want to do a development where I've got the opportunity to put an atrium. Uh, in the center of uh, everything, so this one was a little bit of a challenge because we. Oh, had I've to, never seen anything like that. That's it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we had to uh, work hard with the Gold Coast City Council to get some relaxations because we built boundary to boundary on this particular development. But because it's sort of uh, in the heart of Varsity Lakes and the University Precinct, and they were encouraging some different designs. Then, so this is the only design, only building in Varsity that has this design. So it's fair to say, Mark, that a lot of your because I've always wondered how you got all your great ideas, but. It seems to come from your personal experiences, like you, like you said, you're in Melbourne and you saw an internal atrium, and you said, "Hey, I want to do that." Of a hotel, and yeah. uh, it just uh, it was bright and airy and fun, and it mm. felt good. And so I thought, "Wow, I can't wait to put one of those in a design somewhere." Mm. Unfortunately, you need the right site. So sometimes you're right. You know, it's it's wandering around, and you spot a block of land, and you say, "Wow, I saw something uh, somewhere else." And mm. so, uh, yeah. No, it's great. 
Um, so some other. So here's your past projects summarised. We've probably been through those already. So yeah, we've been through those. We can skip that. Um, so what? Um, I mean, there's a lot of developers. I mean, I, I would rate you as one of the best developers in Southeast Queensland. Um, and I've seen you know developers come and go um, without mentioning any names. But I mean, what what does make you guys different? I mean, you've got your design principles, giving back to the client future-proofing the building through design. Maybe you can just quickly describe or explain what they mean. Yeah, I think if you look at the logo, the logo uh, for us uh, means what it says, and that's passion and knowledge, um, which feeds into the design principles. And uh, uh, design principles are really about uh, how you're going to use the product, uh, how you're going to live in there, where you plug your toaster in, when you walk in the front door, what do you see, how do you feel? So it's not a surprise that uh, our latest project at Ashmore is called Atmosphere. So the brief was, and it was a, it was a large site that used to be a nursery. So when we uh, walked on the site, it immediately had this atmosphere of birds and trees and space, and it was a nice day. So we ended up with the word atmosphere, and the brief to the, uh, uh, the architect was to bring the atmosphere into the development and don't lose it, and so bring it into the units. <laughs> So that brought us to being in an old nursery, natural materials. So that's where you start. So when you find a, a site, you talk, you choose the right architect, and then you say, "This is this is the design principles." Yeah. Go and draw me some rough concepts, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, and again, so when we were at uh, Varsity with Brooklyn, it was all about everything being a little bit funkier and harder, and in New York, you know, yeah. to to yeah. suit that uh, university sort of precinct. Atmosphere is in Ashmore, which is a leafy suburb at the back of Surface Paradise. And uh, it's an older suburb, a leafier suburb. So that's where the atmosphere came from. So yeah. hence, we went for uh, a combination of bricks, open walkways uh, to bring the outside in. Uh, clearly, we can get away with that up here because of the weather. Yeah. Um, so the walkways actually act as uh, breezeways, as, as uh, they do in Hawaii. Yeah. So when you yeah. get the breeze, it, you, you're getting that cross ventilation in your apartment. Right. Um, we brought the timber in and the bricks in and the clean line to the joinery to uh, mm. uh, give that sort of uh, give a design edge, but also the warmness that comes out of the timber floor and the bricks. So it's about getting the elements together. Brilliant. Brilliant. And how do, how do you how does the Howard Group give back to the client? Well, uh, for Ashmore, for instance, giving back to the client would be something that would be missed. Is we've got two point seven meter high ceilings. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, that's something that these... So standard's about 2.4. 2.4. So, you know, just putting those extra little things in there that um, so that uh, they feel a little bit better, they look a bit better. So for something like that, then it gets back to we have a lot of owner-occupiers there mm -hmm. at the moment, 50-50, maybe 60-40 yeah. owner-occupiers. So um, when the investors come in, the people that want to rent the <laughs> apartments... Are happy to pay a little bit of a premium on the rent. We have people who don't want to leave. Mm. Um, so for the investor, that's a consistent cash flow. We have good management. We maintain yeah. the pool, the landscaping. Yeah. Everything has to uh, be pristine. Yeah. The other thing is your pros and cons before as well. Um, you know, with uh, you're not buying off the plan now. You're actually just buying in the future stage. So you can see, feel, yeah. and touch what you're going to get. Well, that's the benefit of, sta of a stage development like Atmosphere. Like you said, I hadn't seen it before it was built. I went in and saw stage one and I actually got to feel and see the walkways, the gardens, the landscaping, what the existing units look like in terms of their layout. Some of them were fully furnished. You can see the backyards. Uh, you could also see um, the common areas, like you built the pools and you built the gyms and all that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, I think you got some pictures coming up uh, later in your presentation there, which uh, give an indication of the lifestyle there. But yeah. uh, again, the important thing is it's uh, we call them breakaway areas. So in Brooklyn, on each level, there's like a foyer, like in a hotel, where you can have your Wi-Fi and sit in the couch. You can go downstairs and have a coffee, or you can go up on the roof and sit on sit in the sun, or and. So having breakaway areas, which is uh, one of the design principles, uh, yeah. I spoke to you about at Rhapsody, yeah. where there's three breakaway areas. Yeah, and I've seen all those ones too at Rhapsody. Yeah, I was impressed. So I actually thought, wow, this is generous. It was almost like it was a whole level. Wasn't yeah, it? at a whole level there. So it's about. Uh, so we, you could have sold a unit. Was it, was it one per level or? Uh, no, uh, we had four, four. The floor below was six, and that floor were, and above was four. So, so potentially you've sacrificed four, you know, four, 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 four apartments, apartments yeah. a couple of million bucks, um, and you and you've given back to the client a recreational area. Yeah, well, yeah. No, it's good. That's 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 um interesting. 
Um, how valuers work, it's also how banks work as well. Um, maybe just quickly summarise this in one or two sentences, Mark. Um, oh, well, it's all about... You've dealt with uh, a lot of valuers. And well, of it's, it's, it's the design. So uh, a valuer would get there and he'd walk through. And uh, when you walk him through, and he's probably seen 10 apartments that day that he's walking around, and he walks into yours, and uh, you've got the extra touches, the extra ceiling heights and floors. It and becomes apparent, doesn't it? It becomes apparent, and uh, they believe in the product and the outcome and where it will fit in the marketplace. Yeah. Um, so that gets reflected in the in the valuation. Um, so design and finish and the builder and, you know, uh, your services being in the right place and things yeah. just work. I think that's, so, a good, that's a good point, you know. Like valuers literally um, drive around all day and they, they probably only get three or $400 for evaluation. Nowadays, and they might have to do you know five or six in a day, and they get to yours, and they go, "Wow!" Like they can see the difference between different developers and different different design principles, and it actually makes a lot of sense. You go from two two point four meter ceilings to two point seven, and then you see exposed you know concrete on the ceiling, like you do in some of your atmosphere units, and you go, "Wow, yeah. this is different." Um, oh, look, there's a there's a, a brick wall that you don't see that on the Gold Coast. You often see like just the um, you know the, the cream coloured um, gyp rock or something like that. So there's a few design features and like like your tiles when you walk through the hallways, um, you can literally lift the tiles up, can't you? The, the water sort of goes yeah. through. And, yeah, that's for uh, uh, you know, system. for 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 waterproofing and also you yeah. don't get the cracks uh, for maintenance. Yeah, I've never seen uh, again, that. Again, the uh, if you now that you've brought that up about um, uh, that flooring system. Part of the design is also about durability. Yeah. So we've gone back to using natural materials of like brick because it doesn't need any maintenance. We People have been building in brick for a thousand years and you don't have to paint it. It don't have to do anything. Yeah, like work. render, for example, it cracks after yeah. one, or one or two years sometimes, yeah. So, uh, you know, again, a part of your property performance is um, depreciation and uh, maintenance. So reduced maintenance means less lower yeah. body corporate which levels. is a big thing in new zealand as well they a lot of their buildings are just slabs of concrete on the external walls and they don't paint them or anything and yeah. glass and wood uh, but wood needs a bit of maintenance but um it's amazing using different materials like um you don't have to yeah you don't have to maintain them and they, and they weather well yeah yeah well that's the other important yeah. thing isn't it? when things weather they uh, look authentic yeah yeah, and look better over time um this is a really good slide i thought we'd, we'd put in here mark as well and get your view on this um what does make a great investment suburb? So, I mean, there's so many suburbs for people to choose from in Australia and there's so many, like, strong population centres. But, what I mean, we've got here infrastructure, growth corridor, road upgrades, price points, et cetera. But to you, when you're looking at different suburbs to build your product in, um, what does make a great suburb for you? Maybe give me two or three things. That well, uh, sometimes it's it's not the suburb. It's the opportunity in the suburb. Um, so we can drive around a suburb and there's no opportunity because there's no land supply. Or you have to go and amalgamate some older apartments and so you're, you're only ever getting a, a small block of land. So sometimes what we try and do is we just try and get onto the fringe of the city where the infrastructure is growing uh, when we first went to Sphere, which is now the Commonwealth Games Village, it used to be a concrete-making facility, um, and the city hadn't quite gone out there, um, but it was planned to go there. So as a developer, you're trying to buy your land as early as possible where you can see the growth. Um, Southport was a, was a great precinct, but now it uh, maybe has a little bit of oversupply. Um, when we went to Ashmore, Ashmore is basically a residential area, and I said earlier in in your uh, in our commentary that it was an old nursery. And the reason the nursery came up for sale was because Bunnings had moved into a number of areas, and people were going to Bunnings to buy the plants. The guy's business wasn't making as much money. He approached me to see whether I'd want to buy it, and I did. Um, so that was an opportunity to get a larger block of land in an inner, inner city location. The other thing that makes atmosphere um, uh, unique is we don't have a lot of apartments around us. So uh, um, for us, a, uh, a good suburb would be where we can deliver our product at a price point where we don't have a lot of competition. So your competition would be house and land. Yeah, yeah. So basically what you're doing is giving yourself an advantage in a price point uh, because you're delivering a, a higher quality unit in an area where – you literally don't have any land supply and you've only got existing houses that are usually, you know, 5, 10, 20 years old. 
and uh, yeah. you know probably a couple hundred grand dearer. Yeah, and so that gives the opportunity for downsizers. So people who sell a house in that area um, who have been there for twenty years uh, will downsize to an apartment. The same reason anyone downsize. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, good, good, um, good uh, summary there. And when we went to Varsity, Varsity was about um, Bond University. Was yeah. uh, the Australian dollar had dropped and uh, made uh, education cheaper. Bond University's enrollment went through the roof, and all of yeah. a sudden there was a shortage of supply in Varsity. So Varsity became a great suburb because it didn't have a lot of supply. The university numbers went up, and so we got in there early to build Brooklyn. So the suburb might be more about the opportunity than uh, Broadbeach, which we did before with one of floors. Yeah, 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 sure. Again, great opportunity, and it was a block of land opposite the beach. So Broadbeach is very, very tightly held for land supply. So um, again, yeah, I hear what you're saying. So basically, sometimes <laughs> two or three suburbs can be similar in terms of uh, in terms of their their metrics, but it's the opportunity to grab a piece of land that's unique close to or in proximity to infrastructure, universities or whatever it may be, that can create a great opportunity for someone to invest um, because it is unique um, in that, you know, there's no there's no land like that left. Yeah, it, and it, it, uh, then you, you get your design team around you when you're uh, referring earlier to having a good team around you. Uh, it's the same principles we employ. We, we look for an opportunity. We uh, surround ourselves with people that – share the vision for the right outcome and we work it up from there. So um, within the suburb atmosphere, we're, we're going to talk about the atmosphere product here, which is in Ash, Ashmore. Uh, here's some photos. We'll just skip through these. You've actually got a sauna in there um, as well, which which is which is great. Um, you've, you've got the recreational rooms with the pool table as well. Well, um, the thing you'll notice about yeah. these pictures is the place is activated. Uh, yeah. You know, there's, uh, you know, uh, when you when you have good design, good place to sit, they get activated because you want to sit there and you want to soak up the atmosphere. Um, so that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, and, and it's livable. I mean, very livable. You, you can you can say you can have friends around. You you got a swimming pool, you got a sauna, you got you got a, a gymnasium, um, you've got weights, all that sort of stuff there. That's um, that's a lot of lot of, lot of common facilities um, for someone to actually you know to live and and, and enjoy. You could probably even sit back and have a beer, Rick. Yeah, you well, you could, you could. <laughs> hey, this is this is one of the um, the display units um, yeah. that I saw, and, and I love the exposed um, concrete ceiling. You just don't see that that often in developments nowadays. And you either love it or you hate it, but I love it because it's different. And you've got the you know the brick walls, and you just don't see that. Yeah, look, um, you know, uh, if we went through everybody that uh, came, uh, I would say more people loved it and hated it, but it was something that you liked or didn't like. So hence yeah. we we uh, changed the product a little bit and we had some units in with plasterboard ceilings. Yeah. Um, but look, it was a lot of fun. It was a good talking point, and the people that love it yeah. really do love it. And very livable. Uh, as soon as I went there, I just thought, wow, this is um, – I could live here. Um, yeah. And the guys are always thought the same thing. So We ask, our, we ask ourselves that in the design team meeting uh, when we finish, would you live here? Um, and uh, if someone says no, we keep working on it until everyone says yes. Yeah, yeah. And the bathrooms um, look great. Um, you've got studies in there as well, so that's, that's all good. Um, there's the exposed brick uh, internally as well. Let's skip through these. Okay, so um, just in summary with, with Atmosphere, your, your latest project there, we've got Stage 2, which is releasing at the moment. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, and just to give you a bit of a summary there, the uh, body corporates, um, you know, uh, you know, between what is it between? Yeah, depending on the unit size, a one better is sixty four dollars a week, and it goes up to eighty four dollars for a three better. Um, and the prices, the prices there in in atmosphere, in atmosphere, where do they start from? You recall what they start? Well, when we've uh, sold out um, the first two stages, yep. uh, stage two, which we're launching at the moment, um, we had some one betters in there starting awesome. at uh, three hundred and thirty nine thousand. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, you know, they're they're very well price pointed. Uh, yeah. We have a full house there. Uh, all uh, all the units are rented that uh, the uh, purchased by investors and new occupiers are there. So we're uh, we're one hundred percent full. Uh, yeah. We're doing a smaller stage of eighteen apartments, which finishes in August. That's sold out as well. Yeah, wow. Well, so great demand, great rental demand. As great well. rental demand, and importantly, valuations, Mark, uh, have been coming in on the dollar. <clears> I think that good. that number is uh, right. Yeah, valuations are bang on the money. Uh, yeah. All the valuers in town love the project. Yeah. 
Um, oh, brilliant. Um, I used to use that nursery as well. So we do. when I did go down there, I said, where's, where's my, where do I get my plants from? But um, there's another nursery somewhere down the road. So Yeah. It's great. So this is an interesting photograph. I didn't mention either. We're having a, we've got a coffee shop um, and that's going to be in the next stage as well. So uh, uh, with a little um, like breakfast bar and little kitties area, stuff like that. Across the road, there's a um, um, couple of shops and down the road, there's your Woolies and yeah. fantastic location. Oh, and the golf course. That's yeah, the, the golf fun. course. Um, so that's stage one that's finished. Uh, stage 1A, which is just about to have its roof put on. Um, and, uh, in a month or so, um, where those existing buildings are, which is the old nursery, they'll be demolished to make way for, um, stage two. Yeah. Brilliant. And there's the, uh, the external view down at ground level. Yeah. So good, good use of glass and wood, uh, there. And you've also got the, um, you know, lovely hedges and garden beds, et cetera. And yeah, it looks, looks very neat. Um, so just for a poll question here, thanks, Mark. Um, just just being very wary of time here. Um, do you prefer DIY or guidance when purchasing a property? So do you prefer to do it yourself, or do you prefer to use a team of expert experts? So I'll just um, open up that poll, um, and yeah. So uh, guidance, bit of both. I'm not sure. Um, Lodge your uh, your answers there.